Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Ted 2. It's a sequel to the original Ted that was a surprising hit of the summer about a stuffed teddy bear who comes back to life since John Bennett's uh, childhood days as he later becomes, as we speak, a foul mouth party animal hanging with his best pal ever since and they just go around drinking smoking and watching all their favorite shows that they love and just have fun and I happen to like the original film actually because it did have a lot of fun it got the idea of what was it like when you have a stuffed teddy bear who wants to come back to life and started spreading out foul languages and, and doing all this other crazy stuff yeah, involving sex, drugs, and all this nostalgia stuff that you love. I mean, you can do all of that in your adulthood. <laughs> so, yeah. Even though it's done by the same person who gave us Family Guy and American Dad. Anyway, let's get back to it. It stars Mark Wahlberg with Seth MacFarlane. And who's the star, producer, co-writer, and director? Amanda Sidfried, Jessica Barf, Giovanni Ravisi, Morgan Freeman, John Slatterty, Patrick Warburton from Seinfeld and in a live-action version of The Tick, with Michael Dorn from Star Trek: The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Coco Brown, John Carroll Lynch, on Canada, and Jessica Sell, which once again, co-written, produced, and directed by Seth MacFarlane. He did Family Guy and American Dad, and most recently he did A Million Ways to Die in the West. The movie begins set in Boston, Massachusetts. John Bennett, who's played by Mark Wahlberg, had recently been divorced from his girlfriend Lori Collins, who was played by Mila Kunis in the original film, for six months of marriage. But meanwhile, his stuffed teddy bear and best pal Ted, who's voiced by Seth MacFarlane, had once up marrying his ex-girlfriend Tammy Lynn, until one year later, their marriage had soon fallen apart as they started fighting constantly together. So, with the advice of a supermarket clerk, Ted and Tammy Lynn had decided that they would once have a child together in order to preserve their relationship. But unfortunately, he's incapable of reproductive functions, so he advised John to help. Since you know, John is already, you know, reluctant by getting addicted to internet pornography, you know, ever since um, his divorce with Lori. Ted has tried his best to actually uh, fix this problem by, by destroying his laptop that's filled with it and, and tries to uh, seek an advice by actually dating many women that he meets. You know, just so maybe it'll help. And as a result of that, they attempted to get a sperm donor, which first, you know, they tried to add um, Sam J. Jones to join in, but unfortunately, his sperm count was only 1%, so that didn't work out. And then, John and Ted were disguised as air conditioning repairmen, just so they can go inside football player Tom Brady's apartment there which I know there was a huge controversy behind it. so anyway during that night uh, they, they sneak into his bedroom and that's when they discover a lot of <laughs> a lot of sperms that they were gonna they were gonna actually work out but yeah then it leads to a big disaster because that's where we, we spotted that funny scene and <laughs> When Tom Brady actually threw uh, John out the window along with Ted, 
But since everything didn't work out as, as simply as planned, you know, Ted decided to go to John's advice by going to the fertility center and have John uh, take out um, one of his sperms. So that way, you know, it'd be enough process to actually offer Ted to to have a child with Tammy Lynn. Which I know that leads to that scene where after he got his sperms, they went inside that particular room where there were tons of of uh, <laughs> of jars full of that, and all that white cum started going all all the way to his face as it drops right near him. And of course, Ted took a picture of it and was about to send it to Facebook or something. <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty funny too. I I, I admit it, even though it was nasty, it, it was. It was actually pretty funny. Um, well, anyway, but things seems to get even much worse was when Tammy Lynn wants up being infertile, having to ruin her ovaries for the excessive drug use that she's been taking. And even worse was that Ted Sunday inquires to actually adopt a child, but that's what makes it even much worse was when Ted was now considered as simply property. So that means that he lost his job, his financial accounts that he has, and his marriage was annulled. So John suggested that they could take the situation to court, but since they couldn't afford an actual lawyer, they decided to hire a young lawyer named Samantha Leslie Jackson, who's played by Amanda Sidfried. Which, um, at first, things didn't seem like it was going to go as planned, but then it pretty much plays out like, like somewhat of a burp worm, and, and she's not really into all this pop culture stuff that they were in. But then, with the share of her love of marijuana, because I know she smokes uh, marijuana a lot, they all bond together, and they work as a team by, by trying to settle the case of their own. But meanwhile, Donnie, who's played by Gina Roddy Rabisi from the last film that they've been in, is now being employed as a janitor at the Hasbro Toy Company headquarters, where he actually convinced the company's CAO to hire an expert to act on finding all the talking bears out there. And since Ted is now being assigned as simply property that's already on the newspapers, that his plan was he was about to use Ted as basically a toy market at, uh, for all talking bears everywhere. So that was part of the secret enough so he can actually capture Ted. Yeah, so this is one of his wild schemes. During court, already since the court was ruling against Ted, they turned into a civil rights attorney who is very highly respected, named Patrick McCon, who is played by Morgan Freeman. So they wound up taking a road trip down to New York City in order to find them, so which includes uh, reckless driving all the way straight into the patch that's filled with marijuana, which they actually play the Jurassic Park frame in, at the background. I thought that was hilarious. And I know because they were even smoking that uh, the porcelain the penis that they had. Yeah, messed up I know. After that, they, they finally went straight to New York City where they met the lawyer, Patrick, but things just didn't turn out as simply as planned. So as a result, Ted decided to run away all the way straight to New York Comic Con. Yeah, it's funny considering that we just had Comic Con last week in San Diego. So that, that kind of works pretty well. Uh, and once they went inside, you know, Ted actually spotted... Uh, their friends, uh, Guy and Rick, you know, both played by Patrick Warburton and Michael Dorn, actually dresses up as, you guessed it, the Tick and Lieutenant Wolf from <laughs> Star Trek The Next Generation. So I thought, wow, this is really something. That they actually get to wear, you know, different costumes uh, of the characters they played before. <laughs> yeah. So then he's being chased by Donnie who was disguised as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, one of them, that is. And he actually captures uh, Ted, only that after he tries to run away from him, 
He found a cell phone and he begins to call John and Samantha right away so they can go, you know, after Donnie and, and save Ted. But it soon gets even worse because once uh, Ted was kidnapped by Donnie, you know, along with uh, the CEO at uh, Hasbro, yeah, things get even much worse when when Donnie wants up. Um, actually cutting the cables by that's holding the model of the Enterprise and John tries to push Ted out of the way until it, the model hits himself until he wants up landing into a coma and of course Donnie is arrested soon after so once they went into the hospital they're trying to rejoice together to find if, if um, John is going to recover from all of this and I know all this just turned into a complete joke but once he finally recovered from that, you know, things went back to normal as planned. So now, after they fix all of the stuff that's been going on, now uh, Ted and Tammy Lynn have finally had a child that they had to adopt. You know, he named them uh, Apollo Queen Cobblane, you know, named after the character that Mr. T played in Rocky Free. And also, John and Samantha finally happily pursued their own relationship together, and the movie ends. <laughs> and I gotta admit, um, it's not as good as the original film, per se, but with that aside, I, I did enjoy it. I, I admit it. it. You know, if you like the first film, I think you're gonna be okay with this one. I mean, it, it had some funny jokes that they went into... Uh, that I, I really enjoy. I mean, one of my favorite moments was when Liam Neeson, who had a cameo in this film, and I know, this, this is sort of like a reminiscence to that God Milk commercial I saw back in 1995 with Harlan Williams, was when he was about to get the trick cereal, but then he asked Ted if, um, if this trick cereal is made for kids or as it's advertised on TV, but would it be okay if you can actually have it anyway, even if you're an adult? And he says, yeah, he doesn't mind, and well, he wants to bind it anyway, and he hides it into his jacket, you know, just in case, you know, they don't get, he doesn't get attacked. That's what leads to that post-credit that I saw afterwards. Yes, there's a post-credit. Uh, I would recommend that scene if, if you haven't seen that part, but I guess you gotta see it for the funny punchline they put in. Yeah, they had some great funny jokes that they went in, although I have to admit some of them were pretty lame. Like, for instance, the scene where they showed the, the stand-up improv and they actually mentioned a joke involving Robin Williams and 9-11. Uh, that doesn't work. Especially since we already know Robin Williams just passed away. And 9-11, I don't know why did they have the joke on I mean, from that tragedy that happened, I don't know why the producers and writers thought this is a good idea to joke about a tragic event because you know, that's that's definitely not funny. I wish they just cut that out. I mean, it would have been so much better if they didn't mention it. And I know there were some other jokes that they throw in, like some celebrity jokes and pop culture stuff that you know, I guess I could tolerate, but others are just kind of lame. Obviously. I know they did throw some some random stuff that. You know, Seth MacFarlane loves to do these days, kind of like when he did it on Family Guy and American Dad. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Because I know the original film was, was as hilarious as I remember it. Um, I still enjoy the original even more because it had a lot of good chemistry between John and Ted. Um, I, mean, I mean, I think they share more of the chemistry compared to to John actually going out with, a, with the girl he loves. And I, I know because we didn't see much of that, although I although I had to say though, I, I kind of would have loved it better if it was just John and Lori together. Yeah. Cause I thought Mila Kunis did a good job playing Lori. Uh, kind of ironic since you know Mila Kunis had started doing Family Guy. I mean, Amanda Siegfried was okay. Um, as uh, Samantha. I mean, there's even a scene where where they're actually talking about uh, her eyes, because I know how big and wide uh, 
a man sip reads eyes is. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, she's always been a good actress. I mean, she's been in movies like uh, Mean Girls, as well as Mamma Mia, and, and Le Miserable, you know, just recently. Although I know she's been in several bad films like Red Riding Hood and Time and and even Gone. You know, I, I hated those films. But nevertheless, she's she's always been um, this pretty, you know, very talented. And she's always been this great as an actress. So I can accept that. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, Morgan Freeman was was also good in the film, but I think her, his character could have done so much better. You know, if, if they didn't give him some of the shit dialogue that they have in Gone, but that's okay. I know it kind of gets a little tiresome at times when they when they had to throw in um, Donnie around, you know, just going after Ted like he did in the first movie. Right. And then they throw in all this other stuff too. Yeah, but that's involving in Comic Con. There was even a scene in the movie when they were in Comic Con, where we actually saw all the <laughs> all the nerds out there, you know, dressed up as all your favorite characters that you see. There was even one of them where they even had the girl from the Fifth Element join in and in the fight uh, along with uh, all the other guys out there. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty funny at times because it's, it's so ridiculous the way they did it but I guess they had to work and and of course the scene with the marijuana patch and all that uh, yeah they they went over for that <laughs> but I don't know but other than that though I, it was okay it just wasn't that great but if you loved the first Ted um, You'll still be a little disappointed with it, but that's okay. Because um, I know Seth MacFarlane's been going through a lot of crap over the years, and I know he's been dealing with that, especially after that Oscar incident involving that song called "My See Your Boobs" or or having to kill off one of the characters in Family Guy, and and even the movie uh, "A Million Ways to Die in the West" didn't turn out so great um, as it seems. Despite the fact that it was a parody of all these Western movies, kind of like uh, Blazing Saddles for that matter. But with that aside, I'll give Ted to two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.